Thanks for tuning in to No Wine in No Time. I'm your host Dave and today I'm talking about a very specific wine from northwestern Italy called Longhi Nebbiolo. So Nebbiolo is the grape and it's native to the northwestern part of Italy in an area called Piedmont or Piemonte. Now Longhi Nebbiolo is a classification for Nebbiolo grown in the Longhi Hills. So the Longhi Hills are the area that surrounds Barolo and Barbaresco. But this particular wine, Longhi Nebbiolo, is not sourced from grapes from either Barolo or Barbaresco. So let's just back up a little bit and think about that. Barolo and Barbaresco are considered the king and the queen of all wines in the world because of their incredible tannic structure and their ability to age for decades. So Longhi Nebbiolo represents a much different type of wine, still has the characteristics of Nebbiolo, but it's much more approachable in its youth. And also, it's significantly less expensive. So if we look at the average cost of a Barolo or a Barbaresco, we're probably between $50 and $100. This gives you some of those flavors, just with a little bit more fruity and approachable persona at a much lower price point, let's say about $20. So how does this happen? Well, Barolo and Babaresco are areas of significant terroir. In other words, an area where the soil, the wind, the sun, the rain, everything is absolutely perfectly situated and suited for growing a specific type of grape. In the hills that surround that, we may be 30 feet different in elevation or just on the other side of a hillside, but it does change significantly the quality or the structure of the grapes or the wines themselves. Now Nebbiolo is an interesting grape because it derives its name from the Italian word Nebbia, which means fog. So it's kind of an interesting connection. Nebbiolo ripens very, very late in the year, late October or early November. And in the Longhi Hills, we actually have the valleys that fill with fog. So back in ancient times, they named Nebbiolo the grape of the fog because that's when it actually ripened. Um, so very interesting history and persona. So let's take a look at one. This particular one's from Fontana Freda. And this is a Longhi Nebbiolo from 2016's vintage. And if we look at this particular wine, the first thing that we notice is that we can see right through it. One of the interesting characteristics of Nebbiolo, whether it be Longhi Nebbiolo, Barolo, Babaresco, is that the phenolic or anthocyanin qualities of it are quite low. So it doesn't have a lot of the purple color that we get from some other inky grapes. But don't let that fool you, it's not a timid wine. If we swirl to liberate some of the aromas, the first thing that we'll get out of the glass is a little bit of a dark cherry and also just a slight bit of tar or earthiness, which is really not unusual, but a characteristic of Nebbiolo. Now across the palate, Unlike its big brother and its big sister, Barolo and Babadesco, this particular wine is ready to go. It's four years old, uh, but in the glass, it's, it's ready for any culinary type of situation. This one comes across with a bit of a tart cherry uh, entry into the mouth, and then about mid-palate, it hits a significant acidic stripe that may steer it just a bit towards, say, rhubarb or cranberry, and then on the back side, we get just a kick of licorice or anise on the back side. Then we feel those gripping tannins, which are certainly a signature of Nebbiolo. Now, a wine like this would go with heavier type of foods. In Pimante, they do a lot of roasted meat, so think something like a, an American pot roast would be perfect with this type of wine. More comfort foods. Uh, would be ideal. Or a Lange Nebbiolo can be just enjoyed by itself on the patio on a cool evening and it would be perfect. So I'm going to enjoy a little bit more of Fontana Freda's Lange Nebbiolo 
and I ask that you come back next time because soon you'll know why in no time.